Hey everyone, Steven here from Board Game Weekenders, and today I'm going to teach you how to play the Quacks of Quedlinburg, the Alchemist expansion. In this expansion, you're going to have a flask that you're going to be moving your essence marker up. You're going to be trying to cure different patients, getting special abilities. There are different uh, loca weed expansion books, different uh, cards to add to your game. So there's a lot in this expansion. Let's see how to play. Now just as a reminder everyone, I am assuming in this video that you know how to play the original base game, The Quacks of Quedlinburg, in order to understand the Alchemist expansion. So if you're not sure how to play the base game, watch a tutorial on that quickly, and then this tutorial for the Alchemist expansion should make sense. You're going to set up the game normally, and the first thing that you're going to see in this expansion is some new fortune teller cards. These are cards that are drawn at the start of every round and kind of change a little bit of how that round works. In this expansion, there are going to be some cards that um, can be used with the base game without using either of the two expansions for the Quacks of Quedlinburg. You'll see that there are two icons at the bottom of some of the cards to which you have to have either the Herb Witches expansion with this little um, Herb Witches hat or this little alchemist symbol um, if you're playing with the alchemist expansion. So you can't use either of these two sets of cards unless you're playing with one of those two expansions. But it does come with cards that you can just mix in with the base game and use those as normal. And as you can imagine, the Herb Witches cards have to do with that expansion and the Alchemist expansion cards interact with different parts of those expansion modules. So that's why they can't be included with the base game. So initially you can see there's some variety added to the fortune teller cards. Next in this expansion we have the Loco Weed, which it comes with two different um, books that you can use, either with the Herb Witches expansion that came with Loco Weed, or if you're playing with just the Alchemists or want to mix in uh, this Loco Weed with the base game, again you have two books to do that. So here we'll see four different booklets that have different kind of abilities for this new token. First one, when you're again moving your chips, the number of spaces that this Loco Weed will move is based on the number of different colored chips you have in your pot. Next, if you're playing with this side, this you would move this loco weed one in your pot and then you can return any colored chip from your cauldron back into your bag. Then on the second card, we have the number of spaces to move is equal to the sum of the values of the white chips in your cauldron. So this you actually want a lot of white chips in your bag for this loco weed to move pretty far. And finally, on the last side of the tile included for the Loco Weed, this has to do with the Essence phase, a new phase included in the Alchemist expansion. This lets you move it one additional space, um, your Essence marker. So that'll make more sense a little bit later. Then, in this expansion, each player will get one Alchemist Flask, which is this player board here. Everyone's going to get a colored Essence Marker that's going to be moving along your flask. And then each player will get four Essence Cards of your chosen color right here on the bottom. Each player will then place your Alchemist Flask above your cauldron like such. And then you will take your Essence Marker and place it on the zero space of the Alchemist Flask. Next, you're going to get the eight patient markers. You're going to put them in a bag or put them in a hand, and you're going to draw three randomly. And these are going to be the patients available for this game. So let's say randomly these three patients were selected. We would then go through the patient charts, and you're going to grab the correct ones based on the patient markers that you chose randomly. So in this case, I would have grabbed the patient charts of the Witch's Hump, Nervousness, and Chicken Eyes. And I could put the rest of the patient charts that weren't selected back in the box. Each player must now decide which of the three patients they wish to treat this game. And they're going to place their corresponding Essence card on their Alchemist Flask. If you remember at the beginning of the game, each of the players was given these Essence cards. And each one of them has to do with each of the eight patients. So for example, if I wanted to cure Chicken Eyes this game, I would find the corresponding card and I'm going to place that on my flask. Now it is important to note that multiple players could cure the same patient. So if two people wanted to cure chicken eyes, that is totally fine, to which we definitely should cure it. So I would take the corresponding chicken eyes essence card and I would place it right on my flask board like you see here. And of course this would be above my cauldron. There's now an additional phase in the Alchemist expansion that happens after the preparation or the potions phase when you're drawing chips simultaneously and putting them into your pot with all the players around the table. Now the essence phase happens before the scoring phase. So let's show you how this works. Now during this phase, you're going to distill an additional essence from your potion, regardless of whether your cauldron has already exploded or not. Similar to the preparation of the potions phase, you'll all perform this essence phase at the same time. 
At the start of the essence phase, you're always going to place your essence marker on zero of the alchemist flask, and then you're going to complete the next three steps one after the other. You're first going to count how many different ingredients or colors are in your cauldron. Do not count the white chips here. Place your essence marker on the appropriate space in your alchemist flask. So if I had you know, six different colors, I would place my essence marker there. Then you're going to add up the white chips in your cauldron. If the sum totals exactly seven, move your essence marker forward one additional space in your flask. So if you hit that seven perfectly, you can move it one additional space. And finally, the third step, if the cauldron of the player directly to your left or right explodes, move your essence marker forward yet another space. So if the player to my left exploded and they pushed their luck too far in the drawing or potions phase, I'd move it one additional space. So this has some interaction with your neighbors with this final part of the essence phase. Finally, after the three steps of the essence phase, you're going to follow this small glass tube from wherever you got your essence marker all the way down to your reward. Now this could be either a rat stone, points, or some kind of special bonus. Some essences actually allow you to perform a special action, which you can use in the next preparation phase. You may also perform this action if your tube does not end in a glass. The special bonuses I'll describe now for each of the different patient cards that you could possibly get. For chicken eyes, your bonuses you will receive immediately after the essence phase. So you'll either get one ruby or one pumpkin chip. You can uh, swap a one chip from your cauldron for a two chip of the same color. You can um, refill your flask. You can take a one chip toadstool, three rubies, roll the die twice and take the bonus after each roll. Uh, you can swap a one chip from your cauldron for a four chip of the same color. You can move your droplet two faces forward, or you can roll the die four times and take the bonus after each roll. So for chicken eyes, you essentially just get a variety of bonuses depending on how far, again, you move your essence marker. For the witch's hump, you will only receive either, again, a rat token or a victory point, depending, or two victory points, depending on where your essence marker is. But you'll actually use her kind of essence's actual function in the preparation phase of the following round. So remember, at the start of the again, alchemist phase or the essence phase, you'll move your marker to zero, but that doesn't happen until after the potions or preparation phase when you're drawing chips from your pot and placing them in. So from the previous round, let's say again, I got one victory point from the witch's hump and I'm drawing uh, tokens to put in my cauldron for the next round. When I place one of those chips on a ruby space, one that's kind of marked with that red ruby there, I can reduce my essence by two spaces and I can earn a bonus for that. So I actually use her essence kind of during the next preparation phase of the next round. So her initial bonus, again, either moving a rat tail or again, one or two victory points doesn't seem too great, but the next round, let's say place a one chip on a ruby space, I can reduce my essence by two and then I can get a ruby for that. Um, if it's a two uh, token, you'll see here all the rewards correspond to the number chip that I again placed on that ruby space. So if it's a one, I get a ruby. If it's a two or a black chip, I get to roll the special die. If it's a three or a purple chip, I get a one yellow. And then if it's a four or loco weed, I get three victory points. So the witch's hump is going to be spending her essence before the next essence phase when she'll be re reset to zero. So ideally, she'll be landing on a lot of these ruby spaces. If you chose forgetfulness, at the start of the game, you're actually going to take an additional toadstool and an additional blue chip crow skull, and you're going to add those into your bag. So you're actually going to start with 11 chips uh, compared to the other players. At first, you're just going to get one or two victory points only if your essence gets to seven or nine, which is kind of tough. But similar to the witch's hump, you're going to be using essence during the preparation phase when you're going to be, again, drawing tokens from your bag to put in your cauldron. So let's talk about how that works. During the preparation phase, you can return a chip of any color from your cauldron to your bag. And you're going to reduce your essence by as many spaces on the indicated value on the chip. So if I drew this one pumpkin, I'm like, ah, I don't want this one pumpkin. Now I want it later. I could reduce my essence by one since it's a value one and put it back in my bag and keep drawing. So this um, forgetfulness allows you to kind of put away chips that maybe you want to draw later. But again, it's based on the number on the chip. So if I drew a four and I don't want it yet, I would have to move my essence back four in order to put it back in my bag. And again, you cannot use uh, loca weed for this ability. 
for vampirism or vampirism i'm not sure how you say that to be honest um if you're on the one space you will receive one additional rat tail at the start of the round if you land on another space you may immediately buy an additional chip for the value you reach at the end of the essence phase so if i reached uh, the six here i could buy a chip again with a value of seven or less and you put that chip in my bag right away so this allows you to buy extra kind of tokens during the game depending on how far you get your essence next we have nervousness so if my essence marker is at one at the end of the essence phase i'll move my uh, rat tail again at the start of the next round if i land on a different space so let's say i got to six um, you're going to draw the specified number of chips from the bag at the start of my next preparation phase. So the next round when we're drawing from our bag, before I do my kind of normal pulls, I'm going to draw four additional chips since my essence marker was at six. And I'll actually set those um, next to my cauldron. So let's say I drew these four chips here. Now you are going to return all of the chips, um, white chips that I drew uh, from this four additional tokens back to my bag. So if I drew these, again, two white tokens, they would go back into my bag. Now, with these leftover tokens, during my preparation phase, again, when I'm drawing tokens from my bag, I can place one of these chips into my cauldron instead of drawing a chip from the bag. So depending on how far I get, I could get a ton of chips that instead of during that, again, potions phase or preparation phase when we're drawing and putting them on our board, I could take one of these tokens instead at the right opportune moment instead of drawing from the bag. For wing ears, if I got to one at the end of the essence phase, again, I can move my rat token one or maybe get a victory point or two. But similar to some of the other powers, their uh, essence is going to be used during the next preparation phase when we're drawing tokens. And during that next preparation phase, if I pick a white chip, I can choose one of two things. I can reduce my essence by two spaces. So if I move back to five here, and I can move the chip forward twice the number of spaces indicated. So if I drew this three white token from my bag in that preparation phase and I moved it back two, I can move this six spaces, this cherry bomb white token, instead of the usual three. So it makes your kind of white chips maybe less bad. Now, instead of doing that, I can reduce it by three and return the chip to my bag. So I could actually get rid of this cherry bomb, put it back in my bag, and hope I don't draw it again. So you kind of have a choice there. Now, neither of these actions is possible after an explosion. So if I drew this white chip and it caused me to explode, I would explode. I couldn't use this essence to activate one of these abilities. So you kind of want to use this sooner before your pot explodes, but this can make your white chips uh, some, kind of a little bit more interactive. For Earworm, once I've finished my essence phase, I'm going to draw a specific number of chips from the bag one by one. So if I was at three here, I would draw two chips one by one. Now, when I place a chip from my bag and place it in my cauldron, just like, again, the value, just like, again, the traditional preparation or potions phase carries out, and I would carry that action out as necessary. So if this token gave me something or interacted with my cauldron, I would do it exactly how it says. If I drew, so in this case my second chip was a white chip, it does not cause my pot to explode, even if it totals over seven. So kind of if I draw these white chips, I'm kind of safe in this extra essence phase when I draw them one by one from the markers here. So this will let you get further in your cauldron with more buying power and activating again tokens abilities. And our last patient card and ability is Carrot Nose. Now, similar to some of the other powers, um, I might get a Rat Tail or a Victory Point or two, but you're actually going to use the Essence ability during the next preparation phase. Now, at the start of the game, uh, Carrot Nose actually starts with an additional pumpkin that they get to put into their bag. But when I draw a pumpkin during the next preparation phase, so one of the orange tokens, I can reduce my essence by two spaces. So let's say I drew a pumpkin and I reduce it by two. I can then place this pumpkin I just drew into the next ruby space of my cauldron instead of the usual number of spaces. So instead of moving you know, a pumpkin token maybe one, I can maybe jump it all the way into my cauldron to a ruby space that is farther. In the ninth and final round, there is a final essence phase, where again, however far you got your essence marker. However, in this round, you won't get any of the bonuses, rat tails, or points on your essence board, but rather you're gonna get one point per space that you advanced on the alchemist flask. So in this case, I would get seven points to tack on to my end score. And that's how to play the Quacks of Quedlinburg, the Alchemist.
All right, everyone, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about the expansion. I hope this tutorial helped you learn it a little bit easier. And until next time, we'll see you.